class for this lecture, we're going to explore the complex relationship between the Cold War and the civil rights movement. So these are two definitive pivotal chapters in American history that helped shape the trajectory of the United States. And so uh, we're going to look at their connectedness, highlight how the global context of the Cold War influenced and catalyzed the ongoing struggle for racial equality in the United States. And then by um, looking at the historical event and king figures involved, we can gain a, a deeper understanding of the profound impact these movements had on American society. <clears throat> All right, so the Cold War refers to the ideological, political, and military tensions between the United States and the Soviet Union from the late 1940s to the early 1990s. Um, this conflict emerged as a result of differing political systems, capitalist, uh, capitalistic democracy versus communist socialism and uh, competing global influence. And so the United States, as the leader of the Western Alliance, thought, sought to promote and defend democratic values on the international stage. Um, <clears throat> The Cold War had profound influence on the civil rights movements in many ways. So the United States faced international scrutiny as it championed democratic values against Soviet criticisms of racial inequality within the country and uh, the external compressure combined with domestic social music movements significantly impacted the path and progress of the civil rights movement. All right, so propaganda was uh, a big tool used during the Cold War. And I think that we've seen so far throughout history that um, ever since the Spanish-American War, propaganda has always been um, something that governments and countries have used, right? So the Soviet, the Soviet seized upon racial tensions in the United States as a means to undermine American claims of moral superiority. Through propaganda, the Soviets highlighted racial discrimination and inequality, often broadcasting these flaws to the world stage. That then, of course, prompted both public and governmental introspecting, compelling the civil rights movement to find common cause with the United States government to help restore America's global image. So we see that with international solidarity and inspiration. Cold War facilitated international connections that inspired and supported the civil rights movements. Civil rights activists drew inspiration from anti-colonial struggles in Africa and Asia, recognizing that shared goal of equality and liberation, excuse me, shared goals of equality and liberation. And so we see the uh, Indian independent movement by um, Mahatma Gumby was very successful and exemplified the power of nonviolent resistance. And uh, that was really a big influence for uh, civil rights leaders uh, like uh, Dr. King, right? All right. So the civil rights movement emerged as a grass move. Uh, uh, sorry, I can't I tripped up there emerged as a grassroots movement seeking to dismantle racial segregation and a secure equal rights for African Americans. And um, there are numerous leaders, numerous events that contributed to its advancement. We have a few that stand out. That would be Brown versus the Board of Education, the Montgomery bus boycott, and the March on Washington. So, Brown versus Board of Education. So this was a landmark Supreme Court case that declared racial segregation in public schools unconstitutional. And so uh, the decision was really powerful because it challenged it, that idea of separate but equal that we see uh, established by uh, Plessy versus Ferguson and 1896. So, you know, the uh, Brown versus the Board of Education was a turning point in the struggle for civil rights. 
And then we have the Montgomery uh, bus boycotts. And uh, that, of course, uh, was a movement that arose against the backdrop of Rosa Parks refusing to give up her seat on the bus to a white passenger. So back in the days of segregation and in, in the South, especially, um, um, uh, uh, African Americans had to sit at the back of the bus. Everybody, you know, white people were allowed to sit at the front. Rosa Parks coming home from work one day, tired. She just kind of takes whatever seat she can. And uh, of course, then some white, I, I can't remember if it was a, I want to say it was a white man who was, uh, you know, approached her and was yelling at her that she didn't belong there, get to the back of the bus. And she said no and refused and was actually arrested for that. And, um, <clears throat> And so then uh, that just propelled the black community in the South to, you know, do this boycott. And of course, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. led it and uh, showcased the power of nonviolent resistance, marked a significant battle, uh, I mean, a victory in the battle for equality. And so another th a thing that they would do because of segregation, you know, there were certain stores, you know, African of uh, the black community were not allowed in, or if they could, you know, they would have to like to go to a restaurant, they would have to go to the back, like to the cook store, and they could get food that way. And so um, they would get people together, and they would go to these restaurants, and they would sit right on the counter, and, uh, you know, they'd have a whole line where it's just all the black community on the calendar, and uh, it was a way to, uh, you know, challenge this uh separate but equal idea right and then we have the march on washington which was another monumental uh event in uh civil rights and uh the march on washington for jobs and freedom represented a pivotal moment with uh martin luther king jr having his iconic i have a dream speech which of course resonated across the nation when meaning you know everybody was able to to relate to what Dr. King was saying in his speech. And, you know, it's the, I have a dream that one day all children, no matter what color, will walk hand in hand. And and a good speech, if you never listened to it, I recommend going on YouTube and finding a copy of it. And uh, so, so they marched on Washington. And once again, it was this peaceful gathering and uh, demonstrated the collective determination to secure civil rights leg legislation and solidified the movement's goal of achieving racial equality. And, um, and you know, this whole idea of these nonviolent protests, that was also, you know, watching what uh, Gandhi did over there and... Um, in India and even in South uh, Africa, you know, the response on the other side was very violent. They would beat people. They would, you know, in the South, in the South United, Southeastern United States, they would sit German shepherds on people that the police would use water hoses. And, you know, and throughout all of that, everybody stayed calm, they stayed patient, and they didn't react back. And, you know, if you ever had a bully in your face or been bullied by somebody, you know that that is the thing, you know, that, that that's what they want from you. They want a reaction, you know, to justify their violent behavior and their bullying tactics. And, you know, when you don't feed that negativity, it does eventually starve. All right, guys, so that wraps up our lecture here on the Cold War and Civil Rights Movement. And so in conclusion, the confluence of the Cold War and the Civil Rights Movement represented a remarkable intersection in American history. The global context of the Cold War with its ideological clashes and international pressures fueled the struggle for racial equality. The civil rights movement emerged as a response to both domestic discrimination and the Soviet Union exploitation of these flaws on the world stage. By understanding the intertwined nature of these movements, we gain insight to the complexity of American history and the enduring quest for freedom and justice. And sorry, there are my APA citations, and here is my reference page. I apologize, I forgot to uh, put one on the conclusion page there. So just like when we're writing, a good rule of thumb is you always want to include one citation per paragraph as support for your writing. And then if you do something like this, make up a type of presentation, 
the general rule of thumb is one citation per slide. So, all right, guys, everybody's doing great in class. Um, we've just got a couple weeks left, so make sure you note the end of uh, um, <clears throat> the end of the course day, as uh, we do have a short week that last week. And so, keep up the good work, everybody. Keep striving for excellence, and uh, reach out to me for everything. I appreciate all of you. Thanks. Bye.